You want to say hi? <laughs> Thank you. So my name is Pranesh, one of the clinical teaching fellows. So welcome to Mofields. So we'll be here for a week. Yeah. What what we can do is we will try to work or start on a foundation on of that. That's going to be with the Monday. It's going to be just building on the basics. Because I believe that uh, your Oftal knowledge is not, how is it? Is it good? Non-existent? Okay. So is it okay if we can start from scratch? Kind of build, start with, there are two eyeballs. Then we will dive into each eyeball, the parts and everything. Good. Uh, so what I want you guys to do is just introduce yourselves. Okay. And tell what's your favorite specialty. I know it's too early to ask that question. Last of now, what fancies you? So, irrespective of what specialty you've chosen, like you've chosen, not sure about psychiatry, but yeah, the others, pediatrics, endocrinology, GP, geriatrics, often will be a some part of it. Okay, will kind of be a part of, of, of the bigger career you're going to pursue. Okay? And that's going to be the, the whole aim, because I think often is a part of your neurology. So click on this UG lecture handouts. That will go to the list of handouts. This is for Monday. So you can click on this indexed Monday. Don't click on that. This is for Monday, for Tuesday, tomorrow, and for Friday. Okay. So for, because we'll be meeting three times. Today, tomorrow, and Friday. So accordingly, you can also get it done. Even if you're not uh, Sami and Fatima, even if you're not being a Will you guys come on Friday? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. So, once that's done, go back to the... Okay. Click on this interactive mind maps. That should take you to four mind maps, of which two are important. One is going to be the acute red eye and the defective vision. Now, this will have uh, the pictures and the text. Okay, The acute red eye and defective vision will be the two important um, study resources or reference materials which you can have for the entire week. Okay? If this is kind of overwhelming, that's what some students have said, like it's too much is there here. Uh, you can click on this. You have a document there and click on this document. This is much more interactive. You can click. You can open and collapse the branches. You can play around. Okay. Just much more easy to navigate this bigger picture. Yes. The third one is this ophthalmology shorts playlist. So this has these all these one minute videos, which are basically derived from the lecture what we're going to have. Okay. And these will be a future resources. These are not 45 minutes ones, just one minute. Because I realize that people don't watch 40 plus, 40 minutes videos. Okay, so I used to make 40 minutes, 50 minutes videos, but nobody watches that. So these ones for the Instagram generation, it's like reels. These are gonna be those kind of. What is this? You guys know already. Iris, this is a cross section view. So you will just see like a two-dimensional thing. But friend, it looks like a big circular board with a tiny hole in center. And this is that hole. The hole is called as pupil. Clear? That's the pupil. This is the iris. What is this? That's ciliary body. Ciliary body. And the rest of this, this is only ciliary body. The rest is called as choroid. Choroid. Again, iris, ciliary body, choroid. ICC, International Cricket Council. <laughs> what do you call it together as? ICC. Together called as UVL tract. UVL tract. I 
just saw Sam. Sam looks like Ken Williamson. No? You can't. <laughs> this is the middle coat of the eyeball. The middle layer. Vascular layer. This is rich in blood vessels. The most vascular part of the eye is going to be this middle layer. Uveal tract. You, you, some of you will even have a posting on uveitis clinic. Okay? Because this is so important layer. Why? Because this is going to be filled with blood vessels. Okay? So any problem in the body with regards to autoimmunity okay, and inflammation in the body, an infection in the body can reflect in the eye through the uveal tract. They can cause uveitis. For example, say sarcoidosis, okay, rheumatoid arthritis, okay, any autoimmune diseases can cause uveitis. Tuberculosis, HIV, syphilis, many infections in the body, viral infections, herpes can cause uveitis. Three layers, we saw the three layers, we saw one inside is going to be the lens. Now this structure, this anatomy kind of gives us different compartments. There are, there are different clear spaces within this. There's a space here, there's a space here, there's a space there. One, two, three. Three clear areas. What do you call this place? Sir? It's called as the anterior compartment or anterior chamber. Anterior chamber. You know where I'm going towards? Which disease we're, look, we're going towards? Good. So it's one of the most important topics. In fact, when I went through the BATS curriculum, okay, in the ophthal topic, you have a list of ophthal topics. The first one is glaucoma. What glaucoma? The angle closure glaucoma. So you should know what is angle, why it is closed, and where the angle is located. So to understand all of this, you should know this anatomy. Without understanding this, you cannot understand why angle is closed, what is causing the angle to get closed. For someone to see properly, now you are seeing me, I'm, I'm being seen. Why? Because your eyeball is healthy. That's one thing. When I mean eyeball is healthy, I mean this is called ocular media. The media. The cornea should be clear. The AC should be clear. The pupil should be of normal size. The PC should be clear. Lens should be clear. Vitreous should be clear. Retina should be healthy for us to see. It's like, you see, this is a projector. You see the light coming here. Okay. Now I'm going to stand there. What I'm doing? Weighing my hand. What is, what is casting back? That, that's a shadow. So I'm a media opacity. I'm a media opacity. I can be a cataract. I can be a vitreous hemorrhage. I can be a corneal scar. So I am standing here, obstructing this media, causing a media opacity. So when you can't see, which means you can have a media opacity, number one. Number two, what is this structure? Light falling on this. What is it? Retina. Retina should be healthy. If retina should be healthy, when I mean retina is healthy, I mean retina should be good, okay? Should be well nourished, should not be ischemic. And also, the retina should be attached. Retina should be on within this choroid, should be approximated. When this comes forward, what do you call that as? Retina det detachment, RD, detachment of retina. So if someone can't see, it can be either a media opacity, retina not being healthy, or detachment of retina. Still, go further. What is, what's back? What this goes into? Optic nerve. So if someone can't see, they can have an optic nerve disease. Because you need the transmission of the impulse, right? Disease of the optic nerve can be anything. Go all the way to the brain. You have a stroke at the back of the brain. Patient cannot see because what is that called as? From the retina, optic nerve, all the way back to the brain. You have a crossing over. Remember this crossing over of the optic nerve? What, what it calls crossing over as? Optic asthma going all the way back to the brain. Optic asthma is going to be a part of the brain. But which part of the brain does the visual pathway ends? The occipital lobe, occipital cortex. You guys know that? Yeah. So there are two aspects. The media, retina healthy, and you have the visual pathway. A problem with the visual pathway, patient cannot see. 
clear? Any doubts? Now, you know the philosophy or concept behind why someone can't see? Light ray should go here clearly. Light ray should fall on the retina. If light ray falls in front of the retina, patient still cannot see. If light is going to fall behind the retina, patient cannot see. What do you call that as? Light ray falling here. That is medius clear. Just that because of some problem within the eye, curvatures, errors, refractory errors, you're short-sighted, long-sighted. Why? Because light is falling in front or back. Got the point? So the concept is light should fall on this for you to see. Clear? Any questions? This is a basic disease mechanism behind why we can't see. Which we'll discuss at the latter part called as the loss of vision. Okay. But before that, there's one important area called as acute red eye, where a patient can come to you with a painful red eye. Clear? Why that happens? Why can you have an acute red eye? That happens when you have a problem in the front part involving the sclera, involving the conjunctiva, involving the cornea and also involving the iris. So this part causes acute red eye. So the concept is you should know where to localize the disease. That is all. Localization of lesion. It's like neurology. Okay. You have hemiplegia. You should localize internal capsule, external capsule, where it is going. Okay. That's localization. That's the fundamental philosophy behind neurology. Same with ophthal as well. You have a problem. You don't have to tell the diagnosis. Tell which part of the eye is involved. You have a lid bump. Which part of the eye is involved? You have a lid swelling. Which part of the eye is involved? Lid? <laughs> yeah, lid, right? Okay. Now, this is going to be the iris. This part, the flow. Okay. There's a hole in the center. What the hole is called as? pupil, I'm going to put my leg through the hole. Where I will reach? I go through the hole. I will go and touch which structure? L lens. Okay? So, we are looking from up to down. Anterior to posterior. So, iris, pupil is called. Pupil is there. Go through the pupil. I will kick the lens. Kick the lens. Where it will go and fall? Vitreous cavity? Good. So now this is iris, the pupil. So what is this called as? This room is called as? In front of the iris? Antrochamber? Now this room is antrochamber. Okay. This structure, which, which arches, what is the structure is called as? Cornea? You get this picture? This picture is very important. I, I'll be keep on referring to this analogy over and over again. Because this analogy gives a very good uh, similarity towards the eye diseases. Especially acute red eye. What is this? Cornea. Now, this structure, see this? The corner between this and this. That is the corner between the iris and the cornea. This is called as angle. This is the angle of anterior chamber. What is this? I know I'm asking stupid questions, but yeah. Cow. What is this? The cow's udder? How is it looking like? Finger like projections? What comes out of that? Milk? So, what comes out of the finger like projections, which I showed some time back? So, if cow's udder secretes this milk, this should secrete aqueous humor. Okay? So, this secretes aqueous. You have aqueous. Coming from here, okay, all the way to the posterior chamber, going through the pupil, and from pupil, it's going to go into the anterior chamber. Clear? Got it? So, again, from here, posterior chamber, through the pupil, into the anterior chamber. So, that's why the PC and AC are filled with aqueous. But this keeps on secreting the aqueous. So, if this is going to keep on secreting aqueous, it has to get drained out. The drainage of aqueous happens at the angle. So, I said, you have the pupil there. Aqueous can come, in, come out through the pupil. 
filled with the anterior chamber with the aqueous they're going to drain into this angle at this angle you have a very special structure called as trabecular meshwork trabecular meshwork What is this? The eye, okay. Yeah. Eye. So I'm drawing this sun ray, the hole in center. So which part I'm focusing? Which layer? Look straight ahead. Now I'm throwing light from the sideways. You see that Zach's entire iris is illuminated. Do you see? The iris is kind of full with light. So which means this is the nose. This is the nose. So I'm arbitrarily dividing the iris into nasal iris and temporal iris. This is a normal anterior chamber because iris is staying within flat. But iris comes forward through light. What happens? Once it gets illuminated, it's going to be shadowed. Not clear, Tanya? Clear? Pins. This is the healthy optic nerve. This was cupping. You see that cavity? Okay. Very characteristic, very typical for glaucoma. It's like this. I'm learning to cook these days, so I'm trying to use these. So this is a that's a wok. That's a saucepan. No? What do you call that? Saucepan. This is a frying pan. There's something in between. What do you call that is? Sort of, okay. Yeah. So this is how it goes for this cupping. Progressively, it becomes cupped. We'll discuss about this when we deal with the optic nerve and the anatomy of the optic nerve and what are things you should look for in optic nerve damage. Well, uh, for, for any medical specialty. But the worst thing is that I, I have only one Sunday off in a month. The other Sundays, what we do is we go for a camp. These are these nurses. These are these are ones who just finished their 12th standard. They're not graduates. So we hire every year thousands and thousands of such nurses come to the hospital. So from here, we go to a remote place. These are patients waiting for us. Because they can't travel to the main hospital. Okay. They come to the place where they can afford to come. So we do the screening there. We have a doctor who uses again torchlight to look for cataracts. So you can detect cataracts with the help of torchlight. So patients are being screened. These are chosen patients for cataracts. So we take them to the hospital. So we give them free food. They sleep in the hospital at night. And we apply them up. We do the blood pressure assessment and everything. So on that night, the day when they arrive, there will be a doctor who will examine these patients. So I was one among them. So we have like 300, 400 patients per day. Okay. So that day's count is 251. So the next day morning, we have these patients lined up in the theater. So we operate around 300 patients every day on average, just for the camp patients. That's after surgery. You can see that the, the, the nurse is bringing one of the patients to the theater. Look, here is the uniqueness. Here is the uniqueness. The surgeon is operating there. While he's operating, this patient is getting prepared. This causes efficiency. Okay. So can we do a quick recap? Eye complaints. How do you want to classify that? Excellent. Non-vision related, what is the important syndrome we were focusing? Acute red eye? Brilliant. So acute red eye, which consists of, what are the components of acute red eye? Pain or painless? Okay. Acute red eye, how do you want to classify acute red eye? So we discussed about the eye complaints, right? The eye complaints can be again classified into vision-related, non-vision-related, 
in non vision we discussed about an important constellation of symptoms a painful red eye present in view we together called as an acute red eye which symptom kind of classifies that further which which triages that further good excellent so it's going to be with defective vision or without defective vision so is it acute red eye with defective vision without defective vision brilliant want to give me some examples of with defective vision excellent acute angular glaucoma number 1 number 2 acute anteriorities excellent number 3 acute keratitis brilliant what is that important history you want to ask no matter what the problem is any acute red eye what is history you should ask history of vary contact lens yeah that's important no matter what it is any acute red eye contact lens history is very crucial can you give me some examples of without defective vision good acute conjunctivitis anything else scleritis brilliant anything else episcleritis nice Anything else? We, we we kind of discussed about yesterday. Something not a congestion, but rather a bleeding. Subconjunctival hemorrhage. Yeah, good. So we have acute conjunctivitis, your scleritis, nepiscleritis, subcon hemorrhage, foreign bodies on the cornea which can cause acute red eye, but they don't have to cause a defective vision. They can be on the corner, but they're not within the pupillary axis, somewhere around. Right? Remember? Yeah, good. So these are going to be the causes for defective vision, uh, cause of acute red eye with and without defective vision. Hmm? Moving on to the next spectrum. You have any questions in this so far? In acute red eye, you are all clear? You know how to diagnose by just showing the pictures? Yeah? Kind of. Moving to vision related. How do you want to split this further? Vision related. Before that, there's, there's one more. Before that. Before that. Still further above. Ah, good. Excellent. Defective vision, disturbance in vision. I know it looks like very kind of semantics and just wordplay, but there is a meaning behind it. A defective vision means the patient cannot see 6-6, six, 6-12, six. Six, six, perception of light, lots of degrees, of grades. But a disturbance of vision, patient can have a 6-6 six, six vision. They have a disturbed quality of the vision, can be double vision, can be a defective field of vision, can be flashes of floaters. Okay, That is a disturbed vision. Defective vision. So defective vision, you want to again classify into. Now you come to the, the normal things. Good. So sudden or is it going to be gradual? So it's a sudden onset or acute loss of vision or a gradual chronic loss of vision. Okay. So is it sudden or gradual? Just the it's pain and painless. How do you want to classify the pain one? as with red eye, without red eye, okay? With redness, without redness. So which means this is nothing but an acute red eye, okay? So what are the three things? You know what are those? Now, what is that one condition which has no redness, but sudden onset loss of vision? Young female, just a, good, excellent, optic neuritis. Remember, the only condition which causes sudden onset loss of vision with white eye on extracular movements, that is pain, optic neuritis. What do you want to rule out in these patients? MS, brilliant. Good. Now, 
sudden onset loss of vision which is painless how do you want to classify now i'll just explain to you so unilateral versus bilateral bilateral causes you know anything bilateral excellent what hypertension million hypertension very good you remember the 18 year old mechanic the bp was 220 120 right young hypertensive so it's a malignant hypertension which can happen in any age for that matter but it's a very high grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy anything else ah very good. cortical infarct so it's a cortical massive impact of the occipital cortex causing a bilateral sudden onset painless loss of vision call as cortical blindness Interestingly, these patients who are having cortical blindness, sometimes they may not be even aware of the fact that they're having a defective vision. Some patients, not all of them, okay? They will say that I can see, but they can't really see. You test the vision, they can't really see anything. But they think that they can see. It's kind of an interesting, intriguing presentation. It's like uh, this phantom limb. You know, people who lose their limbs, though they don't have a hand, but they imagine they perceive they're having a hand. Imagining, yes, hallucinating kind of. This is called as Anton's syndrome. Have you heard of that? No. Called as Anton's syndrome. Okay. I mean, just an extra thing. What else? An important thing. One more, which we don't see in UK, but some. What is that? Methyl alcohol. Excellent. Methyl alcohol and methanol poisoning. Yeah, good. Brilliant. Sudden onset, painless unilateral loss of vision. Sudden, painless unilateral loss of vision, defective vision. Go. Excellent. C R A O. What else? C R V O. Excellent. There's one thing which causes C R A O and this third one. What is the third presentation? C R A O is ischemia of the retina. Ischemia of the optic nerve, optic disc. What do you call that as? It's an optic neuropathy. It's an ischemic optic neuropathy. Excellent. Anterior ischemic. Optic neuropathy, A I O N. You remember? 25 year old male. Sudden onset, painless loss of vision on the left eye. Temporal headache, jaw pain. You know the answer. What is this? Look at this prominent temporal artery. What is this picture? You have a normal retina, but what is this disc? Which is abnormal? Cup, color, contour. The contour, the contour is abnormal, which means, what is this? The You see the margins are blurred margins. What is this called as? What do you call this as? Edema of disc. So, disc edema. Okay. It's a disc swelling or disc edema. Clear? So, that's a disc edema. That's why I'm saying it's important to have the fundoscope and look into the disc. Most important is look into the optic disc margins. Okay, which will be our next thing to go about. Yeah, hmm? clear? You have any questions? So, so if someone asks you, what is this diagnosis? You tell it as anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. Okay, because of Jens arthritis. So GC is going to be the etiology causing this. And the manifestation is called as AION. It's anterior, means it was the optic nerve, it's ischemic optic neuropathy. Clear? Any doubts? Is it okay? Brilliant. Imagine this is retina. Retinas keep on stretches. What happens now? That can be. What is this? There can be a, a tear. Okay. Now, when I say there is a stretching of the eyeball, there is going to be retinal holes or breaks created because of the mechanical stretch. 
number one. Number two, the vitreous which is in front can undergo degeneration. The vitreous should be like an aloe vera gel. Okay, instead of becoming an aloe vera gel, it goes like a liquefied, becomes like watery, especially at this site near the break. Now, what happens? That vitreous gel, liquefied, degenerated vitreous, can seep through this, can enter through this. It enters and it lifts the retina like this. Goes inside, lifts up. There's a fluid underneath. This is called as retinal detachment. Okay.